Welcome to Jake Scale Models. I'm Jason, your host, and I do models. Today we're looking at a adrenal board, a little demo breakout board for practicing and learning to code and stuff. It's a cheapy, super cheap, cheap board. It's like two or three dollars, probably even cheaper on eBay. It has some buttons. Um, let's go over what it has here, and it, it clips on the adreno, and we'll talk about that in a second. But let's talk about this board. It has uh, three buttons, uh, and like I said, there's no instructions for this, so you got to kind of figure this out. Um, it does list some of them, like button one is on A1, A2, and A3 for these buttons, which you know, a button on a analog pen is a little weird. Normally I put my button on my digital pens, like my interrupts and things like that. But, you know, that's okay. And then we have A5 here on this um, first set of pins here for, I guess, a potentiometer because you have ground and 5 volts. And then you have your three PWMs, so you could technically plug a servo in there if the pins line up correctly. I have to check that. We're going to be doing some tests with this board. You have four LEDs here. I don't know if they correspond to 10, 11, 12, and 13. I'm not sure. Or they could be D1, D2, D3, and D4. I'm not sure about that. That could be a thing that they're hooked to. And then you have your uh, seven, um, four digit seven segment display. I am not aware of what they are hooked to. It says. Um, U2 and U3 that could be anything and then there is a uh, buzzer here I believe it's an active buzzer and then it has a transistor to drive the buzzer it has a resistor and I'm not sure if this capacitor is across it looks like this capacitor is across that buzzer as well and then you have a variable resistor, a trim pod, a 10 turn trim pod on A0. So you have all your analog pins taken up. And then you have this little section here where you can put a Bluetooth module or a voice recognition module. I don't know about that. I do have a Bluetooth module I can plug in here and test that. Then you have two sets of jumpers here. I'm not sure what they do, but I'm going, I'm going to test this board and figure out everything it does. I'm going to test it with you guys. And then we have this weird system here. This looks like it's for an LM35 uh, MOSFET maybe, or a voltage regulator. Because it, this last one comes off of pin A4, and it appears that these one of these pins is positive and one is ground. If you follow the traces from it, um, it appears to be ground and positive, but we'll test that with the meter here in a bit. And the reset button, and that's about everything on there. There's no I squared C breakout that I can see. So, and the jumpers, again, I'm not sure what they do. Now, one of the issues with this board, and again, I think literally three dollars with shipping. Um, I had to put some tape under these pins right here because first the pins came long and I had to clip them back but they still rubbed on this metal casing and were grounding themselves out so the, the display was being grounded or some of the pins was being grounded. So I put some two layers of electrical tape on here and one on top of of this USB port shell and you could actually see when I took it off there was an indent into this where it was where it was grounding out so let's plug this in and we're just gonna throw some power on it real quick and see what we get I haven't tested it since I covered it up with electrical tape so we have just I don't know what's on this Adreno and apparently we have all the segment displays lit up. Um, buttons aren't doing anything. That resets it. Makes D1 light. So that, that is, is basically, basically 
it powered up with no code. But now we can look at this here. Let's find some things out here. I can get it in the shot. Let me tone that down a little bit. Now, let us... Turn on the singlet and open up the monitor, and we're going to see where we have power on this board here. Tells me my device is dead. Okay. Where does it say I'm not connected? There we go. So we got some voltage here. Let us see if we can find out where some things are going here. First, I want to see if I know, I believe this pin is A4. So one of these is going to be positive. So this one is supposedly ground. Let's touch this middle pin here and see what we get. So we're getting four millivolts, so that one power. Getting something, but not what I thought I was going to get. Any one of these have voltage? Okay, that pin has 5 volts. So, thought for this LM35, one of these would have a voltage. And then it would send, it has millivolts. Okay, it has 5 volts on the one I thought was the A4 pin. So, A4 must be connected to the LM35 middle pin which would make sense if that was the gate so that would make sense let's swap over to continuity here uh, continuity see if that works continuity and I'm going to unplug the circuit now we're going to test for 35 Okay, so the middle pin, the middle pin is connected to A4. Okay, so and let's just make sure this is A3 here. A3. A2. A1. Really can't test that A0. Okay, let's see if we can find out what side of the pin this is. Okay, so D1 is connected to pin 13, pin 12, and then pin 11, and pin, nine, pin 10. So they're all connected that way. Now, I wonder what happens if I pull this jumper out and I put this jumper over here. Does it change the continuity of these switches?
Well, it doesn't seem to. I would think you would have a switch on the A2 pin on the digital pin 2 because that's your digital interrupt so I would think you would have a switch connected to that all intents and purposes it looks like this jumper goes from this pin here this pin here then it goes to this resistor so it goes to that resistor to that middle pin across that resistor which is Three one oh three, so one zero and three zero, so ten K. One zero three the ten K resistor. But so if you jumper this you are basically connecting this and this pin together. So let's check that just to make sure we're right. So if we jumper that these two should be well, it's going to give me a resistance of 1500 ohms, which is this resistor here. So, I'm not sure what it does in that position. It appears to be going to the buzzer. Is this side connected to ground? Okay, so this goes, this jumpers, this S3 switch, and it appears to go to, and to the buzzer, so, let's well, see, you can't run a voltage to that pin, but, Goes to channel, channel this either transistor, transistor or the MOSFET right here. You can't see, see what that, that is. Could be a little transistor. Could be a MOSFET. It's hard, hard to tell without seeing the number. number. So, so tiny. tiny. So, I'm going to hop into the Adreno software, the IE, and I'm just going to program some stuff to try to figure out what pins this seven segment display are on. If I knew what the input pin was from Okay, this is fed from pin eight, so this must be either the data or the clock. Must be the data or the clock. Trying to see here. This looks like it's to ground right here. I 
So that's the ground pin. This must be the 5 volt pin. Yeah, that's the 5 volt pin. So this could be a clear pin. Does it go to is it high or low? Okay, it looks like it's pulled high with a 1K resistor. You can see that it's ohms. So that looks like that signal's being pulled high. So I said this is pin eight. About this pin here. Ah, pin four. Found it. So pin four and eight. Now which one is data and which one is clock, I'm not sure. So I'm gonna write that down. I'll put this jumper back on here. I'll write this down on my Florida poly pad. So D four and D eight go to what chip is that? See if we can see the chip number on there. Seven four H C five nine five. So it is a five nine five chip register. Five nine five. Okay, well I have I happen to have a book of my common used data sheets. Let us just find the 595 shift register right here. Boom, we're going to find out what pin that is. This is why I keep the data sheets while well, that is really swapped out. Alright. So. So let's orient this in the way that it was on the... Let's try to go down here. Okay, so let's get this back in here. So let's see if we can go this way with it. So, if this was, if this was VCC, let's just double check that that's VCC, and that's VCC, so this is going to be an output, and then this is going to be going to pin 8. So, pin 8 is going to our serial in pin 14 okay so then we have so 9, 10, 11 12 12 goes to pin 4 12 is a register clock our serial in pin 14. Okay, so now we need to find out what this pin 10 is. No, pin 11. Serial register clock, so 9, 10, 11. like pin 7. So SR clock is pin 7. So D7 is our SRCLK pin 11 on the 
shift register. Okay. Now let us check to see what serial clear pin at 10. That should be. Is that tied high through a resistor? Wow, that is just straight tied high. Not even a pull up resistor. The clear, so wow, that's just crazy. Not even a pull up resistor on that um, the storage register clear. Normally, you want to put a pull up resistor on there, you know, like 1K or whatnot. So let's see, pin 13, let's see if that's pulled high or pulled low. Pin 13. Yeah, that's, that's just pulled straight hard, hard low with, with no, um, no, no resistor. So now if we look at this one, this should be the same as this one here. Yep, and pin 14 should be the same. Pin 14 is not the same. So it's got kind of a different serial end. Oh, you know what? The serial end on that one is going to be. It's going to be multiplex, so it's going to be pin 9 on here. Yeah, so it's multiplex, so that's that, that, that checks out. So the next one is 12. So 12 should be connected up to 12 on this one. Yep, and then 13, same, or 11, same thing. Okay, so that is that figured out. So we figured out those pin locations. Have not figured out what the active buzzer is connected to. But it is connected through this button here. And this whole arrangement here. So, so let's go in here. Let's write down D. One is D thirteen, D two is D twelve, D three is D eleven, and we have PWM on the thirteen and eleven, and D four is D ten pin. Yeah, there's P. Uh, uh, there's no. Yeah, there is PW at one pin ten. Okay, so and D four does not have PWM, but D eight does not, but D seven does. I don't know why our stereo clock needs PWM. I would have used some of the, I would have reserved some of the PDMs for external. I guess you can pull it externally through here. All we have left to work out is this buzzer. So what I'm going to do is I want to go from so that goes to that resistor. That goes to so that goes to that. So I want to pull that off. I want to find out where this jumper goes. So it goes to this transistor. 
in the other side of this capacitor. So is that just tied into a green ground plane? No, it's not tied into a ground plane. So it has to be going to it has to be going to power this buzzer. Now I am going to pull this off and touch the buzzer here. There's nothing on this side of the board. Um, so I want to no oh, it's coming through this MOSFET here. So I want to go through this side of the pin and touch on this MOSFET here. Oh, let's try this side of the pin. Yeah, so this, okay, so this, this transistor MOSFET thing, I can't test that to see what it is um, in circuit. I would have to pull it out. So that definitely goes to this pin here, which is tied to A3. So how you're going to get a signal out of this is a beyond me being tied to A3. So, now I wonder, hold on a second, let me just check something here. Looks like an A0 track. Possibly a pin 2 track comes to here, maybe. So that goes to pin 2. I'm not sure. That's an interrupt pin, so. your interrupt pin is any one of these powered that's ground that's five volts so that could be an external button input going to pin two so let's just do this let's do the u4 dash i r dash two we're not sure what that is and that has a three circles. This is pin two. This was G and D. And this one was plus five volts. So ground plus. So so I drew that on here. So this is pin two. This is this section here. I'm going to draw this other section here that I don't know what this is. Three pins there. So we do know that um, the middle pin is A4. A4. Um, so this. Let's further investigate this. Yeah, so, so this, this one, one, that's right. This, this one, one was ground, and this, this one, one was positive. positive. So, if, if it's, it's a, a module, module you clip in that has six pins, pins I don't think, think that that would that, that would work. Now, now see, see, I, I use um, a rotary encoder for a lot of projects. projects. And, and I wonder if you could plug a rotary encoder if there was, let's see if there's 5 volts on this Bluetooth module because there's really no, there's only one digital pin on here and I need two digital, three digital pins 
to plug into. So let's check if there's power and ground on any of these. So that one is ground. That one is power. So let's draw that on here. So, so this one is ground and this one is power. Okay, let's double check that. Now, let's see if what we get on pin. Nothing on that one. That pin doesn't seem to go to anything. Okay. So that pin goes to pin one. So the fourth one goes to pin one. So this one. goes to pin zero. This one goes to pin zero. There are a lot of pins left that they could have used. Okay, so that one's got nothing. And I'm not getting anything on that one either. So. So it basically has pin 0 and pin 1 and a plus and minus. So if it had one more pin on it, let me look at the bottom of the board again and see what I get. So it appears that that is, that is the fourth one. Yeah, it appears looking at the bottom track here. Let me brighten that up a little bit so you can see. It appears that this bottom track does indeed shoot over here. So this is the fourth one over. So that's pin one. And all right, yeah, looking at it that way. So minus plus, which makes sense. It goes to the plus pin and then this pin here shoots down, shoots down, and it jumps through the board. And it looks like it goes to pin six. does pop up through the board right here.
and somehow it gets down to pin one. So this must be a multi-layer board because that jumps through and shoots down to pin one. And that's the only two tracks on this side is this power track that goes, you know, to this potentiometer and this five volt rail here and goes to this pin giving you five volts. This one you can see shoots down, pops up in front of six, pops back down and goes to one. So maybe not multi-layered, just two layered. So it has to jump this track right here. So let's see here. The reset one, and then see, I'm not seeing any any tracks coming from this on the top of the board. So how is this pin zero? So pin zero follows all the way under here. goes to what I thought appeared to be A5 but it appears to loop around loop around go up and go over and plug in up here under this solder mask here it plugs into there it's a long way to run that pin zero track I think they could have punched through the board and came up somewhere else So, so have we, we used, used every pin here? So let's, let's just see, see if we used, used every pin. So if we used a a zero is the potentiometer. Okay, a one, one, a two, and a three is the switch one, switch two, switch three. A4. A4 is an LM. 4 is an LM35 thing. And A5 is on the breakout. It is a breakout. Okay, so then we have digital pin 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So pin 0 and pin 1 were on the Bluetooth. Just right, Bluetooth. And pin 2, pin 2 was this U4IR-2 thing. Pin 3 was pin 3. We didn't see anything on pin 3. Pin 4. Nothing for pin 4. Pin 5 was the breakout. Breakout. Pin 6 was breakout. And pin 7. Did we have anything for pin 7? Nothing for pin 7. Pin 8. Oh yeah, pin 8 was our... Okay, pin 4 was our... our clock. Our clock. Pin 7 was our SR clock. And pin 8 was our serial. Serial in. And then pin 9. Pin 9 was breakout. Breakout. And then 10 was D4. This one was D3. D2 and 
21. So pin 3 is the only one that, unless pin 3 goes to this, turns this buzzer on with the switch, because it does say LS switch 1. LS1. So let's just see if we can't go to pin 3 here. Because it is a pulse width modulation. Let's put this jumper on here. So pin three. So pin 3 goes to this resistor here, and if I put it right here, it's not going to give me a resistance value. Where does that resistor go? Yeah, it goes to the other end of this MOSFET, so it's switching the, so it's probably sending a pulse width modulation symbol to the buzzer, so pin 3 goes to the buzzer. And that was the last pin that we had to figure out. So. That's it. We did it. We figured out all the pin locations of the of this breakout board. Uh, it only took us 42 minutes, but uh, you know I played around a lot with you know writing it down twice and talking about some different things. So that's going to do it for this one. I will come back in another video and um, I'll write some demo code off camera so we don't have to fumble through me coding because I'm not the best at it. But that's going to do it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for paying attention to this. And if you made it through to the end, thank you so much. For equipment, I used my singlet uh, SDM3045 digital multimeter that is on the screen now. Any of my other singlet gear I haven't used in this project, but it could be used in later projects like my oscilloscope, my SDS1104XE. But you can visit me at these social media links. You can support me on Patreon, or you can go to my GoFundMe page in the description to help me afford electronic test equipment and stuff for scale modeling to help grow the channel and do more things. Thank you so much, and have a fantastic day.